I was 18 in October and December I was in the service. That's how soon it was. <laughs> Did I like it? Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 ha I had to like it, yes. I was an infantry scout. A scout. It's in the intelligence and reconnaissance platoon. And you're a scout, you go out and you can order the area, find out anything you can about the enemy, etc., etc., etc. Okay? You're a scout. 88s, you don't know what an 88 screaming memes are. That was what they were called because they were a bank of. Pardon? Oh, come on, interesting. I, I, I was fumbling over everything. So they cut the top of the trees down, there were a few trees, so the trunk, the, the trees, the branches come down on top of us. Astonishing. Awesome. Awesome. That's all I can say. Um, I'm sorry. What's the word I'm trying to think of? Evidence. All the evidence we had were cases that we were going to try. And among the things that I had was, I keep telling my sons this, I had a piece of pure gold the size of my fist. No alloys in it, just pure gold. It was so pure I could knead it with my hands and the imprint of my fingers would stay right in the gold. And this major took over for a captain that for a captain clean came over and opened up the safe one day, let me see what he's got in there. And he grabbed that piece of gold and that was the last I saw of it. What he did with it, I have no idea. But all I can think of today's market, what that gold would be worth, it's probably worth a hundred grand or better in today's market. The pure gold, the size of my hand, I could squeeze it and the imprint of my fingers would be in it. Now then, what else would you like to hear? April 1st, 1944 was Palm Sunday, okay? Because in later years, my, my mother told me when I got back home, she told me that she had a dream that day that I got killed. And what happened was we were crossing the Rhine River and the Rhine, there was it, springtime, of course. There was a thousand yards from the edge of the, of, of the forest, a thousand yards to the, uh, roughly a thousand yards to the Rhine River, and the engineers had come down and put on a pontoon bridge so we could cross over under shale fire because on the other side of the Rhine River was a cliff. And then behind the cliff, on top of the cliff, the Germans were stationed where they were still in. That was their front. And of course they had uh, spotters that could tell what was going on and they were firing at us like crazy with the 88, uh, 88s. And uh, as we were crossing that river, I'll never forget, shrapnel all over. I got a little piece of my left leg here, but I'll never forget the people in front of me. I had my M1. And as I was walking, running across, and the shells would come, we dropped down, and then you, you could hear it coming. You could hear the shells coming in at you, drop down, hit the ground. You know, this is a whole uh, company going over, whole battalion going over, really. And I had my, my rifle cocked, and when I handed, there was Lewandowski, a kid from um, Detroit, Michigan, was in front of me, and as I hit the ground, I probably didn't know I didn't have my safety on, and my elbow or something must have sat there, and I went right through his helmet. And <laughs> he's right through his helmet. And you know, and then I got home, you know, a few, a few months later, I got home, my mother told me that she dreamt that on Palm Sunday, April 1st of that year, that I was killed. So you know, the, all these things just bring you back to, you know, but it was scary, it was scary. There were other times it was scary too. We were getting shot at a lot, but we, we managed. And I'll tell you, some of the things I saw in Germany. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's end it at that. I don't want to talk anymore.